So today I'm going to talk about 10-ish books that I love but I have not yet talked about on this channel. So stick around. Hello everybody, for those of you new around here, my name is Roger and welcome to my channel, Roger's Reads. So today I'm going to talk about books that I love but I haven't talked about on this channel very much. So maybe these will be books that I've read uh, prior to uh, joining BookTube that I haven't really talked about on this channel. So the first book I want to mention is entitled Mort by Terry Pratchett. So this book is part of Terry Pratchett's Discworld series and follows a boy named Mort, an awkward, a bumbling young man who really does, doesn't possess any particular talents. So his father takes young Mort to a job fair in the hopes of uh, passing him off to somebody else and uh, finding the boy an apprenticeship. So it seems that nobody is really interested in Mort as an apprentice until just before midnight someone on a white horse and wearing a black cape comes up and offers Mort an apprenticeship. So now, now Mort's father believes that the job is uh, the position of an undertaker but in reality it is the anthropomorphic manifestation of death himself who is now offering Mort a position as his apprentice. That is to say Mort has to learn how to be death. So thus follows Mort's zany adventures and uh, misadventures mainly as he learns how to become a reaper. So yeah this is uh, one of my favorite books in the uh, Discworld series. Another a runner up to this would be uh, Weird Sisters which I think might be book four or five around there maybe seven around there. In Weird Sisters we meet the witches for the first time. Granny Weatherwax Nancy Ogg, the owner of the uh, evilest cat in the world, and McGrath Garland. And in this story the witches uh, team up to save a prince and restore him to the uh, throne in a tale that borrows heavily from uh, William Shakespeare's uh, most beloved works. But really uh, any of the uh, Terry Pratchett Discworld novels, and they don't need to be read in order, they can be read in uh, any uh, sequence um, if, I, if I recall correctly. And actually one of my goals is to reread the entire series from start to finish. And I started that last year, but I kind of dropped it. So I think I need to pick it up again this year. So anyway, the next book, oh my iPad shut off. Come on, Roy, there you go. The next book is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tellis. So we actually read this book for my in-person book club. And if my memory serves, everybody really loved it. So the story takes place in 1922 and follows Count Alexander Rostov who is deemed an unrepentant aristocrat by the Bolshevik Tribunal and is sentenced to house arrest in the Metropole which is the Grand Hotel across from the Kremlin. So there the Count meets Nina, a precocious young girl who interestingly has the keys to the entire hotel. And meeting her ends up changing the Count's entire life, helping him to discover a new purpose uh, for his life. Now, despite being confined to the hallway of the hotel, the Count has actually quite a compelling and adventuresome life in the hotel, complete with uh, capers and conspiracies. Yeah, so A Gentleman in Moscow was really a, a compelling story, chock full of interesting characters and plenty of humor. And the next book on my list is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. So this has now been made into a TV series on stars of which I believe the uh, second season is scheduled to air in April I think. I really loved the first season but I read the book right when it first came out. Actually I've read the book a few times. So American Gods follows a man named Shadow who has just been released from prison after his wife is killed in a car accident. So lost with nowhere to go and no job prospects in sight, he's recruited by a somewhat dodgy character he meets on an airplane who says his name is Wednesday. So Shadow takes the job and suddenly he finds himself thrust into this weird world of gods who have become con artists to survive and 
he ends up being kind of like a pawn in a battle between the old forgotten gods of mythology and the new gods of technology. So yeah, so this is one of those books that I loved so much that I've read it several times and, uh, and I'm really not much for rereading books so you know how much I enjoyed this one. Of course I am a fan of Neil Gaiman's writing. So the next book on my list is It Had To Be You by B.G. Thomas. So this is a gay romance novel, um, more of a novella actually if I remember correctly. And this follows a man who is in the wrong place at the wrong time and inadvertently gets shot only to wake up in the body of a man named Jimmy who was shot and killed in 1927. And the story started out in our current time period. Now you all know how much I love the time travel trope, so needless to say I fell in love with this story. So along comes a man named Hugh, who's sweet, who's intelligent, who's sexy. But the problem is, is that he's in love with Jimmy, the man whose body he's inhabiting. Now against his own better judgment, Robert finds himself falling in love with Hugh. But how can he explain that he isn't who he appears? How, and how can he get Hugh to love him and not the man whose body he inhabits? Oh, and there's also the little issue of who shot Jimmy slash Robert, why he shot him, and whether he'll come back to try again. So this was one of those short reads that really packed a lot of punch and I do believe that I've read this probably three or four times as well. Uh, it's definitely up there on my favorites list. So the next book on my list which is number four is The Vampire Vesta by Anne Rice. So I've read the entire Vampire Chronicles, all 18 of them, and the second book in the series The Vampire Vesta is my favorite. So the book follows Lesta, who was once an aristocrat in the uh, days of pre-revolutionary France and who is now a rock star during the 1980s. So in this book we get the story or his life story from his point of view and we follow his adventures throughout the centuries as he searches for others like himself all the while seeking answers to the mystery of his existence and how vampires came to be. Now I've always loved the character of Lestat, he's uh, so complex yet frightening, um, compelling and loathsome at the same time. He also has quite an interesting character arc throughout the series. Now this is the second book in the series with Interview with the Vampire being the first. So we were introduced to Lestat in the first book but the story was told from Louis's point of view. In this book we get a different perspective all from Lestat's point of view. So uh, and also another book that I've reread. But, uh, yeah, but as I mentioned I read the entire uh, Vampire Chronicles and I really enjoyed my uh, a journey with all the books. So number six on my list is The Magicians written by Lev Grossman. So this is the first book in the Magicians trilogy which includes uh, The Magicians, uh, The Magician King and The Magician's Land I do believe. But this first book The Magicians was my favorite. So the story follows Quentin Coldwater who turns up for his entrance interview to Princeton only to find his interviewer dead. But there's a strange envelope that has Quentin's name and kind of leads him to an entirely different university, a secret world where magic is real. So this is basically a magic school for adults. So for a while it seems like all of Quentin's dreams have come true until everything ends up being shattered and Quentin gets sucked into a new dark and dangerous world with that has kind of a Narnia vibe to it. I've seen this book referred to as a Hogwarts for adults and uh, I have to respectfully disagree. This is definitely not Hogwarts and it is much much darker. So this trilogy has been made into a television series on sci-fi I do believe but I know it's also available on Netflix. I've watched the first season and I haven't gotten around to the second season yet but I do plan on uh, getting doing so. 
But as I mentioned, uh, the series is a bit dark, so it's definitely not for the faint of heart, especially the uh, television series that I'm referring to. But uh, yeah, I did enjoy the Magicians series. So if you want to uh, delve into the world of an adult magic school, then there you are. Next book on my list, number seven, is, is Bloodsucking Feeds, A Love Story by Christopher Moore. So this is the first book in a trilogy, with the others being uh, You Suck and Bite Me, both of which I loved as well and I now take place in San Francisco. So this book follows a young woman named Jody who one night gets attacked. But instead of robbing her, her attacker bites her in the neck, shoves thousands of dollars into her shirt, was it a hundred thousand? I think I might have been like a hundred thousand dollars into her shirt, and then pulls a dumpster over her. When she awakens, she makes the unsettling discovery that she has become a vampire, a blood-sucking fiend. So what follows are all sorts of rollicking adventures with Jody and her mortal boyfriend Tommy involving, let's see, uh, an evil vampire, murders, uh, several zany characters, and some interesting scenes with the Emperor of San Francisco. Not the mayor, mind you, but rather a colorful character known as the Emperor. And I, actually he makes an appearance in uh, many of the uh, Christopher Moore novels. And as is usual in a Christopher Moore novel, things get pretty crazy, but the book is a lot of fun. So if you like silly adventure, check out Christopher Moore. And the Vampire series is a good place to start. So the next book on my list is The Stand by Stephen King. So I'm guessing that most people around here have heard of The Stand, uh, Stephen King's lengthy novel that comes in at about 1,200 pages, if memory serves me. So this is a gripping story of our world after a deadly plague has wiped out 99% of the population. So the few people that do survive, the survivors have to pick sides in the inevitable battle between good versus evil with the 108 year old mother Abigail on one side going up against Randall Flagg, also known as the Dark Man. So though this novel is super long, the first time I read this, I read it in only a couple of days. And yes, I didn't say first time, I did read this a couple of times. And I actually listened to the audiobook of this the last time, and it was phenomenal. So yeah, the stand way up there on my uh, list. Probably one of my favorite Stephen King books, if not the favorite. So the next book on my list is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. So this follows Diana Bishop, a young scholar and historian who is also the orphaned daughter of two powerful witches. She's also a direct descendant of the first woman executed in the Salem witch trials. And her parents always cautioned her to be discreet about her talents before her parents were uh, murdered for supposedly having too much power. So Diana, discovers and unlocks an enchanted alchemical manuscript which attracts the attention of a 1,500-year-old vampire named Matthew Claremont. And she also attracts the attention of other fantastical creatures, uh, demons, other witches and vampires included, who are not quite as friendly to Diana as uh, Mr. Claremont is. So Diana and Claremont find themselves then in a race to prevent an interspecies war because of the manuscript. So this is a trilogy and I read and enjoyed all three books, um, though I love the uh, first book the most. So the author really created an incredible world with these books and I really wouldn't mind rereading them at some point. This is uh, one of the few here that I only read through once. So number 10 on my list is Replay by Ken Grimwood. So I've mentioned a few times on this channel, more than a few times, that I love 
time travel slash Groundhog Day type of novels. In fact, you know, there was one year there where I didn't read anything except for time travel novels. <laughs> Don't ask. So anyway, I've already talked about the first 50 Lies of Harry August on this channel, but one time travel book that I haven't talked about yet is entitled Replay by Ken Grimwood. So the book opens up when Jeff Winston, age 43, is in the midst of having a heart attack at his desk and dies and wakes up in his college dorm 25 years younger. He has somehow gone back in time and is now once again 18 and is in his former 18 year old life, meaning he gets to do it all over again. So he lives another life until, boom, heart attack at 43. He dies again and lives again, caught up in this 25 year cycle. So he retains all the memories from his former lives. What follows is a riveting account of his lives as he lives each life with the memories of his previous lives and we see his loves, his losses, his ability to make a fortune of the stock market. I mean, I would love to go back in time and invest in uh, Microsoft, Google, and Apple. And then there's also his search for others like himself, wondering whether he is only the one and searching for the mystery of why he is caught up in this never-ending cycle of uh, reincarnation, as it were. So yeah, this is also one of those books that I've read several times, or reread, reread I should say, several times. So I'm also going to mention another book here called Time and Again by Jack Finney. This is another time travel novel that I read a few times that I really enjoyed. So this follows a man named Cy who figures out how to time travel and steps into New York City in 1882. So one of the reasons he chose that particular year was that his friend Kate, I do believe her name was, uh, has this mysterious half-burnt letter which is dated from that year. So he kind of wants to investigate uh, in the mystery, follow along with the mystery. But things get complicated for Sai when he begins to fall in love with a woman he meets in the past. So at some point, he has to choose between the two worlds forever. So yeah, so that's time and again. And yes, I know that's more than 10, maybe 11, 12, but I did say 10-ish in the title, so there's a little wiggle room here, right? Sure, why not? You know me, I always have a couple of audible mentions thrown in. So that does it for the uh, 10-ish books that I like, but I haven't talked about on this channel. So uh, if you like this video, and I'd really appreciate if you'd uh, click the like button below, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't, and that way you'll get notified when I release new videos. So that about does it. I will talk to you all in the next video. Roger it out. Ooh.